Uh, nearly 500 restaurants in Tehran have been shut down for breaking Islamic principles. The Iranian capital of Tehran is down 547 restaurants and cafes following a severe police crackdown on establishments found to be flouting Islamic principles, such as playing illegal music and posting unconventional advertising in cyberspace, or otherwise permitting debauchery. Meanwhile, 2,000 new all-female morality police units are to be tasked with ensuring that Iranian women wear the hijab or headscarf. Um, also, the reason why this is happening now is the uh, EID, is that right? Or oh, uh, what the aid? What? What do you mean EID? Uh, right now, isn't it like um, I'm? I'm trying to no. wonder. I'm just wondering why they're choosing right now to start shutting down everything. Isn't it because it's Ramadan? No, I, I'm not sure. It might be a political statement between gr different groups in government. It might be that. That's interesting. It might be because of religious holidays or something. Yeah. But this is in Iran. This, the, you know, these things start improving a little bit. They let people get away with shit for a while, and all of a sudden, tanks. It just goes back again to the oppressive mode, and it's weird for like it's it's hard for people to realize what's happening in the background. Like the five hundred and fifty restaurants, they they shut down because of playing haram music, and at, like I think. On Islamic advertising on Facebook and and, and also, yeah, there are other other things as well, such as mixed gender parties mixed or um, uh, displaying signs of social or moral corruption. Corruption. Wow. I I mean, like this is just insane. And then and then the fact that two thousand new morality police units. Are, are being tasked right now Whoa. ensuring that Iranian women wear the hijab or headscarf. And this is just getting uh, out of hand. And it, the article goes on to mention Ramadan, and I wasn't sure if that's why mm. you know this is happening now, because it says that though eating during daylight hours in Ramadan is not technically illegal, those caught snacking between dawn and dusk in public places often face arrest. Okay. So they're saying that it's not illegal, but people are still getting arrested for it? So see what what happens in like Upper Tehran because here's the thing, young people in Tehran and other places in Iran. I can mostly comment on Tehran because that's where I was and Shiraz. These people want to party, okay? These people want to party and they party sometimes at risks to getting arrested because you're young. You know this is the only chance you get to have some fun. So fuck authority. Like you're gonna go and you're gonna go to restaurants and these restaurants. It's really hard for these restaurants to like figure out what the political climate at the time is because sometimes it just changes so fast. So they're going on a few years and they're having mixed parties and they have loud music and they're making good money because a lot of young people are like, oh, this is the place to go because it's fun and it's like, you know, it's a new hip place. And the, the restaurant is getting away with it for like five or six years. They're like, okay, it seems like this is tolerated. Let me see if I could go up you know, a little bit and maybe become a little bit more liberal, like have some ads on Instagram that is a little bit, some, you know, girls would suggest, you know, but some, you know, I don't know, dancing or something. And like, oh, I got away with that too. And they, and all of a sudden something happens somewhere. I don't know what. You get some guy, new authority figure in the police department or the besiege in this case, actually. Um, not the police, actually. This is not the police. This is the besiege. Um, right? Is that the besiege? Yes, morality police, this is the fucking message. Um, and you, somebody is like, okay, we need to make a statement now. Or somebody somewhere is making a statement from one political division to another political division. And this is the way that they're making the statement. And all of a sudden, the 550 restaurants get shut down. But the, the most interesting part of the story is that... So, you have to understand that the, the, in, in, in Iran, there are different parts of... Um, you don't... It, you don't just deal with the police. You have the police, you have the artists, you have the IRGC, and one part of the IRGC, which is the, you know, the Revolutionary Guard, which is the most Islamic part, is is the Basij. And these Basij are these um, part, you know, morality, they act as morality police. And morality police means Islamic morality police. Usually the police itself, the police department of the city, doesn't arrest people for stuff like this, um, but this group of people they do, uh, and they're mostly looking for people, 
that are not being religious enough, right? And the fact is that 2,000 is a high number. Like, this is a, this is a huge higher, right? 2,000 new, and this is the key part, all female morality police. So that means this might be a reaction. They were waiting for this. This might be a reaction to all these uh, protests, all these women in Tehran and uh, the rest of it. I should say Iran, not Tehran, because... Mm, People outside of Tehran don't get enough attention. So all these women in Iran taking off their hijab as protest to the mandatory hijab. I think they, Iran was waiting because Iran got so much bad press for this. Iran got embarrassed for their pu uh, for their poor human rights record for arresting women. Just like this was the norm in Iran for for you to get arrested for not having hijab on. But that level of international attention was embarrassing for Iran's PR front. And this is something that Iran needs um, for making deals with other countries, for being able to... Like, if, 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 if Iran's human rights record is, is being highlighted in other countries, like United States, Canada, Germany, and all these places, then if the people and citizens of those countries hate Iran government's poor human rights record, then what happens is that they will support their politicians for backing out of deals with Iran. So this is why Iran needs a PR front, right? So I'm thinking a lot of these, w they were arresting some of these women that were protesting, taking their hijab off and all of that. But then they 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 stop a little bit because they're they're feeling the heat. They're feeling the international heat. But I think they were waiting they were waiting for the for the international eyes to go to other places for them to now retaliate over all these women, and I, the reason why I think this is about the women arresting women for women that are liberal, women that are showing their hair, women that are being partying, dancing, stuff like that, is because they hired two thousand new all female morality police, and the reason why it's all female is because men can't ar arrest women you know are asked and are supposed to right they can't just go and hold on like if if you are if you don't have good hijab or if you're dancing in the street or something like that or have music uh, if you're a man if you're a, mor a mor morality police man you can't just go grab her right you need a female police officer to go grab her right and to me the fact that they're hiring 2000 new all female morality police of uh, officers suggests that there's going to be a lot more arrest of women in Iran. Actually, Absolutely. Yeah, go on. Um, I, I also wanted to ask you, because I tried doing some research on this and couldn't find anything. Mm. There, this article isn't saying only, you know, 2,000 new all-female morality police. Mm. They're saying morality police units. What? And so, yes, 2,000 so new all-female morality police okay. units. What does unit, is that, is that how they count people or is that is a unit has more than one person in it? That's what I was going to ask you because it I seems to me that they have, you know, local police chief um, and they have, so a unit uh, here is definitely like, you know, a group, a group of people oh that are tasked in Holy an area. Crap. And um, that's a lot of people. It, Holy shit. It, absolutely. It's a lot of people. <laughs> but they're saying that there's growing dissent from women on the topic uh, as mm. serious political and security issues for our country with Iran at risk from the perils of Western lifestyle. That's Social a lot cameras of people. On the, they, they've also put special cameras on the Iranian highways uh, in place to monitor female drivers who might remove their hijabs while driving in rural or suburban areas. So they are taking it. OK, so this was. This is a huge thing because a lot of women have been fighting in Iran because the women in Iran have been trying to fight little by little to get their rights, right? One place that they're trying to get their rights is inside their cars, right? Because Iran's laws is saying that you don't have to wear the hijab in your own private area, right? You, can, you have to wear the hijab in public, right? Yeah. So women are saying, you know, my car is my private area. Right. So I should be able to take off once I get in my car, I should be able to take off my hijab. And they're trying to use the car as a way to get more territory from the government. Right. So they're saying we're using the country's own laws to fight for our rights. Right. So they're defying. They're trying to defy their rights by 
getting inside their car and, and in a place where everybody could see take off their hijab inside the car, right? Because everybody could see inside the car. But the, gov the government were like, nope, nope. And now they're installing... How are they affording this? Like, look at how, what they're spending their money on. They're hiring 2,000 new all-female units and they're installing cameras to catch women without their hijab inside their cars yeah. at a time that the country is suffering so much international so sanctions. This one of the greatest sanctions that they have ever dealt with. Prices for everything is is increasing. Inflation has skyrocketed. In, like look at the value of the currency is is diving like a rock. People cannot afford their food. The government itself is finding it more is like they 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 spent the government can't afford as much as they used to, but they're spending their resources on this. On this, they like they they are they want to. I I know why they're doing this. It might seem. I mean, it is insane, but it makes strategic sense. And hear me out on this. They want. They think that if they give a little bit to these women, because these women came out and they were so defiant, and they got international. They were defiant against the government. And they got internationally rewarded. And the government wants to make a point. Like, listen, you got your 15 minutes of in fame. But the international community is going to abandon you. And they're going to, as soon as they, you're not interesting to them anymore, they're going to go away. And we're going to show you who's the boss here. Right? They, they want to make sure that these women don't feel like they want anything. Because if they feel like they want anything... It will encourage them to ask for more. So they, once the international pressure is away, they want to come in and make sure that they regret fight, being this defiant to show that not only we're not going to give in to the things that you ask for, we're going to even go a little bit more extreme than before, or a lot in this case it seems, just so that you know who's in charge, so that you don't get encouraged to do this ever again. Because you need to get punished for embarrassing us on an international level. I think that's the message. And I think a lot of people in Iran might hear that message and it might work. So people think like, oh, Iran is being an idiot. But strategically, this makes sense. These women might be like, look, the whole world was give, supporting us. And now they abandoned us. And now we're going to go to jail on a higher, high scale. And nobody, nobody's, nobody's going to be here for us. Nobody's going to save us. And they're going to regret ever speaking out. You know, the picture that they put on this article is very fitting. Because for people that can't see it on the podcast, because this would relate. By the way, search for Atheist Republic podcast if you prefer to listen to this on audio. Um, the picture is, a, is a, an officer looking at a woman in a restaurant. And this is what happens in Iran. Like you, you, a lot of women, they show off a lot of their hair. Like they have the hijab, but it's very loose. Like it's just around their neck, maybe, or just half of their head. And but then when they see an officer looking at them, they adjust it and they bring their hijab to cover more of their hair, because they're always trying to get just a little bit of more freedom, right? Oh, I have to wear a hijab. Let me just see if I could get away with showing. Because they, you know, they don't want to just take everything. You know, all the rules. They don't. They want to see every little bit of freedom that they could grab. They want to take. And, you know, you can see that she's looking at the officer in the eye and she's adjusting her hijab because she knows that she's going to get in trouble if she doesn't. You know, she's, it's so, it's so, this is such a sad picture. This is such a great picture, by the way. Atheists are under attack in many places. If they were Christians, their voices would be heard. If they were Jews, their voices would be heard. If they were Muslims, their voices would be heard. But they are atheists and not many seem to be listening. Let's make it difficult for them to ignore us. We have built a global community, and now we are tearing down geographic, cultural, and language barriers so we can find each other and support each other. In the last decade, we have built the largest atheist community in the world. Now we are doing the same in other languages. With your help, we have started Atheist Republic in Persian and Arabic. انضميت مؤخرا لأسرة Atheist Republic وحيصير عندي بودكاست باللغة العربية. As we grow, we can dedicate more time, staff, and resources to start doing the same in Spanish, Portuguese, Malay, Bengali, Urdu, 
Hindi and other languages. We are providing community, support, informative content, and amplifying the voices of those who need protection, especially in countries where people feel isolated simply for their lack of belief. We want to be there for them, and we are only getting started. Help us get there. Check in the description for ways you can support our projects.